guys! Today I'm reviewing the New Wave Infrared Cooking System. It's an as on TV product that has been around for many years. The New Wave cooks food using infrared, conduction, and convection heat. You can cook fresh and frozen food in this unit. With frozen food, you don't have to defrost it. You can cook straight from the freezer, which is convenient. Also, the heat is contained inside the dome and should not heat up your house. You don't need any ventilation as this unit should produce little to no smoke. Of course, we will test that out. This new wave measures 13 and a half inches tall, 15 and a half inches wide, and weighs nine pounds. It will take up some counter space. It uses up to 1500 watts and 12 and a half amps. The inside is 12 inches in diameter and six and a half inches deep. The cord is 33 inches long. This is the easy cooking guide with cooking times for fresh and frozen food. The instruction manual has 50 pages of recipes for breakfast, appetizers, vegetables, and desserts. Any pan that you can use in a regular oven can be used with this unit, like foil, metal, glass, or silicone. You can also line the pan with foil for easy cleanup, especially if you're making bacon using the rack. This is the base that should stay cool to the touch. It should not be put on your stovetop. The enamel liner pan goes next. Make sure the handles are dropped down. It just sits inside. You can put food directly on this pan or place another type of dish on this pan. Then goes the rack if you're using it. When you put the rack this way, you'll get about an inch clearance or you can use the rack this way, which will give you about three inches. You can cook one food on top and another one on the bottom at the same time. The plastic dome goes next. It just sits right on the base. Last is the power head that plugs in, put it in the middle, and turn it clockwise to lock. This is the holder for the dome and the head. Put it underneath the handle and it'll sit. When you want to check your food, what you can do is take the dome off and put it right on the holder. It'll just sit there. This just makes it easier for you to access your food. Also, you don't have to find a place to put this hot dome. Before using, wash all the parts in soapy water, except for the head, of course. Except the head, all the parts are dishwasher safe. As with many of these types of appliances, when you pull it out of the box, there will be a strong plasticky smell. When you plug in the machine, you'll see a zero displayed. To cook, set the cook time using the number pad and then press start. That'll start the cooking process. The default temperature is 350 degrees Fahrenheit. You can change the setting to Celsius if you'd like. You can also adjust the temperature depending on what you're cooking by pressing cook temp. When you're cooking, the time is displayed and it will count down. When time is up, the machine will beep and automatically stop cooking. If you want to pause cooking at any time, you'll press the pause clear button once and you'll see the time left. Press the pause clear button twice to stop and the display will show zero. When you're cooking between 100 and 324 degrees Fahrenheit, you can cook just under 10 hours and up to two hours when cooking between 325 and 350 degrees. With the delay button, you can program the unit to wait up to nine hours and 59 minutes before cooking. If you want to heat up already cooked food, press the reheat button, start, and it will heat for four minutes at 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Let's go ahead and test the new wave out. First, I'll cook a whole chicken. I've put the rack on the enamel pan. This is about a four and a half pound whole chicken. I've put salt and pepper on it and just a teaspoon of oil. When you're cooking a whole chicken or turkey, cook it breast down first for half of the cooking time, then turn it over and cook it for the second half. So now I have this chicken breast down. The average cooking time for chicken is about 20 minutes a pound. I'll put the dome on top. The head is already locked in. I'll set the cook time to one hour and 30 minutes. And press start. It sounds like a low fan. It's not very loud at all. You can see the heating coil and the fan under the head. 
This is the chicken after half an hour of cooking. You can see the skin is starting to get golden brown. There's a lot of juice and fat on the pan. The middle seems to be more brown than the sides. It looks good so far. We'll check this in 15 minutes and turn the bird over. If at any point during cooking you feel your meat is browning too much, you can always put a little bit of foil on top of the meat to prevent it from getting too dark. You could see the skin is bubbling and the fat is literally pouring out of the meat. Here's the pan. You can see all the oil flowing in the pan. Looks like a wave of moving fat. It's been 45 minutes, now I'm gonna turn the chicken over. I'll pause it. You could take the dome off by holding the sides of the head, the handles, they're still cool. Okay, there's a lot of hot steam coming out from the side and I almost burned my hand, so I would use an oven mitt. You can see that the skin is really crispy, it's puffy. There we go. It works if you stick a spoon, a wooden spoon or any other kind of spoon in there and lift it and uh, use a oven mitt on the other hand. You can see the other side is pretty much white. Put the dome back. Press start if you want to start cooking again. Now we'll let it cook for another 45 minutes. So there's 15 minutes left on the timer, but the chicken looks done. The skin is very brown, so I'm gonna take it out and check the chicken. The warm button can be pressed to keep food warm after cooking. The default is 155 degrees Fahrenheit for two hours. You can program the time. It's of course best to remove the food right after it's finished cooking. There is again a lot of steam, so make sure to wear some oven mitts. I'm gonna put a thermometer in the thigh to see if the chicken is actually cooked. It's definitely cooked. We could have even taken this out maybe five, 10 minutes ago. So you can cook this four and a half pound chicken in a little over an hour. I'll just transfer this to a plate. You see how beautiful the skin is crispy. The chicken is pretty evenly brown. I'm gonna transfer this chicken to a plate cover it loosely with some foil, and we'll cut into it in 20 minutes. It's always good to let meat rest for at least 15-20 minutes, depending on the size of the bird. You can see all of the liquid, the fat on the bottom, there is a lot of it. I'm gonna unplug the machine, wait for it to cool, then clean up the unit. The plastic dome is very hot. When you take the head off, there will be some water dripping from it. The head looks pretty clean. You could just wipe it off with a damp cloth and dry it. Chicken's rested for 20 minutes. I'll cut into the breast. The skin is a little crispy. You can see the meat is nice and juicy. It has not dried out. I'll taste this. I have to say the meat is incredibly moist. I'm really surprised. It's very, very soft. It's super soft, actually. I know in the infomercials, they like to cut into the meat right away after it's cooked because they want to show you how juicy it is and all the juices are running, but don't do that. Definitely let your meat rest for at least 20 minutes or more depending on the size of your chicken or turkey or beef or whatever else you're cooking. So the new wave did a great job on the chicken. Just gonna 
taste a little bit of the skin. Skin's very tasty. You can see the wing here, the wing tip. It's crispy. And for the most part, the chicken is evenly browned all over. The leg comes right off. So that's cooked nicely also. Very tender. This tastes almost like a really good rotisserie chicken. And when I took the chicken out, it was about 185 degrees. Now the safe temperature for chicken is 165. So I could have even taken the chicken out about 10 minutes earlier. While the chicken was cooking, there was no smoke at all. Of course, the room smelled like roasted chicken and it was a good smell. There was no plasticky or unpleasant smell. You can see the other side of the chicken. It's pretty much falling apart. It's cooked that well. I just cleaned off this enamel pan and it was very easy to clean. Just pour the grease off, wash it with a sponge and some warm soapy water and it was easy. Now I'll try some frozen french fries. Put the rack on with a three inch height. I'm using some crinkle cut fries. Put them on a single layer. The middle probably is a little bit hotter than the edges, so if you have any big pieces, I would just put them in the middle. Put the dome on, and we'll cook this at 350 degrees for about 20 minutes. It's been 15 minutes, and some of the fries are very golden and others not so much. I'm just going to open the dome and check the fries. You can see there are a few brown ones and the rest are just a golden color. I'll just see if this middle one is done. It's super hot. It's crispy and it's cooked. The fries on this side on the edges are not very brown. They are cooked, as you can see they're still crispy, but the coloring is a little bit lighter. Even the light colored fries are completely cooked. So these frozen crinkle fries will cook in 15 minutes. It's a good alternative to deep frying. Of course, it depends on how many fries you eat, but this is about three servings, I would say. So you can fit three, maybe even four servings on the rack at one time. If you wanna try out this new wave oven, I've put a link in the description below. I hope this review was useful. Subscribe for more reviews of products you use every day. Thanks for watching.